please excuse me for sitting down while addressing you. Um, it's because of the way the setup is arranged here, but it's more comfortable also. I'll be sticking to a 20 minute um, speech, and uh, if I start exceeding the time, please just uh, start throwing things at me to remind me to stop. Thank you. 
Okay, so basically that kind of introduced my work with schools in Singapore. Um, and some words which appeared in the video would be um, intuitions. And to us, uh, to my team, this is um, very important because a lot of the time we feel that curriculum design and curriculum theories tend to approach um, 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 pedagogical strategies from the point of view of surfacing student misconceptions up there. So, but the problem is of course that um, there's a lot behind, there's a lot more than just the misconceptions that the students bring. It's like just the tip of the iceberg where you only see a little bit of what is visible but actually there's a whole lot which is invisible or as the word says that is tacit. So the problem for us as teachers, uh, those of us trained to be teachers and educators, is that very often we are unable to um, understand where the student, why these misconceptions arise in the first place. So this is the work of our team. Um, we aim to do this primarily by using um, um, technology to Basically, if you have a look at the diagram here, where do the intuitions come from? The intuitions come from the lived experience of the students. So, for example, a student who is uh, living in Myanmar would have a different experience from someone living in central Bandung, and another different experience from someone in uh, Otsa, um, Milan, for example. Um, so, but the problem is that the curriculum materials, the textbooks, which which the students have are generally all written by the same source. So the students do not have an authentic understanding of what the they are able to connect, basically. So we use um, we try to intervene at this level, which is almost a subconscious level, by using technology and in play, as you saw in the video. So we have four time opportunities to play so that Basically, essentially, we are trying to, um, if I can, yeah, we are trying to break down the, uh, we are trying to make a larger proportion of the learning explicit, so it's easier for the teachers to understand where the misconceptions come from. Um, so that's the theoretical framework. Um, okay, yeah. So very often, um, I mean, the stereotype of the East Asian ASEAN student. <laughs> because our, our education systems tend to do very well across the world. Um, very often this is a stereotype of the East Asian student where you know, the students are always very eager to, um, to answer. But we are interested actually in, uh, yes, the student may be eager in answering and may even give you the correct answer, but how much does this really tell you about what the student understands about the concept? Because just because, just because um, the student can give you correct answers in mathematics, for example, does not necessarily mean that um, he or she understands the uh, deep level uh, arithmetical and mathematical uh, concepts behind it. So um, I took this photo from um, uh, when, when I was up in the month, and it shows, basically I'm trying to say that our students come to the classroom with, with deep local knowledge with um, indigenous understanding, and I think it's our duty as good educators to try to 
such as these um, uh, local knowledges. Um, is, uh, why? Because so that we can make the learning more authentic for them. Okay. So basically, now the following, uh, it's, I'm, don't worry that you can't see it, it's deliberate. Okay? Um, I'm using this as a negative example of how to teach. So very often, we, our textbooks are filled with graphs and tables and charts, such as this that you see here, which basically to someone who is weak in mathematics uh, is very unintelligible because um, we are presenting the student with the end goal um, without acknowledging that he or she may not necessarily start from this direction. So um, this data is very decontextualized. There is no context to this kind of data presentation. And yet this is what's on the textbooks in English. So um, this is one step towards trying to uh, give greater context, this time by overlaying numbers uh, in a map, but it's still very, um, it's still very, uh, it's a step towards the right direction, but it's still not very informative. Because, just because, for example, th these numbers represent um, pollution indices, and the map is of course of Singapore. So just because uh, in one part of Singapore the pollution is higher than in another part, that doesn't necessarily uh, be very meaningful to the student. Um, and this is just for Singapore. So you can imagine across the whole Indonesian archipelago, um, I mean basically you can put Singapore, you can put it in Jakarta. And um, so, you know, it's, it doesn't make much sense to do something like this. So here we are trying to go one step further beyond what I just saw by trying to localize data within a school. So here is a representation of the school campus and the red dots uh, represent uh, ways in which we can uh, place uh, sensors uh, for the environment such as noise, uh, gas, uh, light, uh, humidity, temperature, air pressure and we can use them around the school environment um, using uh, freely available open source low cost hardware um, to try to make the data more authentic for the student. In other words, the teachers can use data from within their local school rather than from using it from an abstract textbook concept. And um, this is one step even further where we have a virtual representation of the school, for example, and the data can be represented in abstract forms here. You can see that the cones represent the data and the cones can be of different shapes, can be a cylinder, can be a cube, and can be of different colors, can be of different sizes. And each of these parameters, uh, shape, color, size, can be mapped onto a corresponding parameter of climate, for example, temperature, humidity, um, air pressure. So at one glance, you can have an understanding of how the climate is varying across the school. Um, I'll skip this video in the interest of time. And so basically, we, uh, these are what the, so as I said, we are using low cost uh, open source hardware. Uh, those of you who are interested in engineering and um, electronics, you probably have heard of uh, Raspberry Pi, Arduino. And so these are some of the components that we're using. And they can be assembled together in a very cheap way. You can see that here we have uh, used a supermarket um, um, uh, box. Yeah. It's a sandwich box which we have drilled some holes into and uh, we basically can waterproof it just like that. <coughs> and uh, here's an example of how the, um, how the team works together with the school uh, to locate the sensor in a school environment. Here it's a canteen, for example. And um, this is what the sensor looks like uh, when placed in terms of a, a, a wall or a pillar. And also gives you a sense of the scale, it's pretty small. It's also self-contained. It runs on batteries and uh, it can use solar power as well, so it doesn't need to plug into the main grid. Um, so I, this is another video, which is, uh, I think we have enough time to watch. So this kind of basically, uh,
So basically, um, that video showed how um, we use the sensors in a particular school. Um, as I said, um, it can be this is a school in Singapore, but it could well be a school in any one of your representative districts. So to sum up, um, today I've talked about this morning I've talked about um, quite a number of things and. Uh, just to help you make sense of all the various um, areas which I've talked about. We started off by talking about uh, misconceptions and intuitions and uh, how a lot of the time the intuitions are very important to the conceptions but uh, the problem is that they are hidden. Then I went on to show you things like this which is basically how we are trying to make the hidden more open um, by using local data which will be authentic to the learner and we're using this through um, these kinds of uh, hardware and um, to, to I think what I'll do this is a video but what I'll do is I'll scroll back to the end if I can I'm not sure if I can um, to kind of I was going to actually build up this video bit by bit. Okay, this is a uh, we'll use this slide. Okay, so to sum up, this is a diagrammatic representation of all the various ideas that I talked about today. Um, So, and then upstream. 
question even further is the Bakarnana. The Bakarnana? Yeah, the Bakarnana, which is the how. So, how do the sensors work? What do these circuits mean? What do the components do? So, you can use it in terms of engineering as well for STEM. So, basically, that sums up my presentation today. Okay, thank you very much. You're good on the floor. Thank you. 